crazy, tiny, curvy road uh, in the middle of nowhere in New Mexico to get to the shipper with this load that goes to Michigan on this episode of The Clutch Trucker Channel. Clutch Trucker filmed before a live and fuzzy studio audience. Yep, that's Rusty, the world famous meatball dog. Hey YouTube, Clutch Trucker here. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Clutch Trucker Channel. Alright, uh, just picked up a uh, load of Zarman Zeolite. Sounds like some European, <laughs> uh, I don't know, monarch or something. Yes, my name is Zarman Zeolite here. Anyway, it's some sort of a mineral closely related to uh, like talc, talcum powder. Uh, it's a moisture absorber. It can be used for various things uh, agriculturally. It can be used in products like to enhance kitty litter uh, and everything up to uh, uh, maxi pads. So has a lot of uses apparently. Always learning something new, that's what I like about this job. 56 years old and still learning some new stuff every day, it's pretty cool. Uh, as you can see by this road I'm on, uh, out in literally the middle of nowhere, New Mexico, a place called Winston, New Mexico, which we're not even back up to that town yet. The road leading uh, in and out of this place is, uh, like I say, right now it's dirt. I've got another about six miles of this, maybe five miles of this dirt road. Then we get on to the paved road, and it ain't too much better. Real windy, real crazy. Almost took out some Bambies on my way down here this morning. Uh, you can tell this is the kind of place that if it rains, you ain't getting there, or you're not getting out. Because look, just crossing this place where the water can go over the road. So, uh, yeah, kind of interesting. But anyway, so here it is, Friday, uh, the 7th, oh, uh, April. And uh, we're taking this load up to Michigan, just south of Grand Rapids. A little cattle guard here again. I think I've driven over about 18 cattle guards <laughs> on this road so far. So kind of crazy, but thought you might like to check out this road because, uh, yeah, this is not a normal trucking lane, that's for sure. You can see it is definitely a dirt road. Now we can pick up our speed a little bit does get real windy and crazy up here and like I say even the paved portion uh, you're going 10 miles an hour on a lot of this up and down we're at almost 6,000 feet right now we go up to over seven and then back down to around 4,500 by the time we get all the way back over to I-25 it's only about oh 40 miles from I-25 but it's gonna take me well over an hour because you can see I'm not making any kind of uh, major speeds here as we cruise through this little canyon in New Mexico, baby. coming into the giant megalopolis of uh, Winston, New Mexico. Yeah, I had never heard of it either. So, <clears throat> but apparently some people live here. Out here in the middle of nowhere. If you uh, want to avoid the city and be in the rural setting, boy, this is the place to be. Uh, here you go. So this is the town, and then we drive through a whole bunch of nothing again until I get back to I-25. I'm going to stop at the uh, Loves in Berlin, just south of Albuquerque. Finally got my shower. I meant to go one yesterday. I didn't have time. 
kind of glad I didn't because I drove through all that dirt and dust and I just feel like I'm coated. In one quarter mile, turn right on New Mexico 52. Thank you, Garmin. I feel like I'm just coated in dust, so I'll be happy to get my shower. And I got to scale the load, make sure we're okay. According to the app way, it looks like I'll be all right. So uh, they had a scale on site, said my gross was 78,880 pounds. So 220 pounds room left to put some fuel on. I'm a little still over a half tank, so uh, might even be able to fill up. We'll see. I'll do the math once I get the cat Turn scale. Turn right on New Mexico 52. And see where we're really at. What do you think? that road was pretty crazy so uh, <laughs> especially when it sped up like that it does look like a roller coaster doesn't it all right so I got up to the loves that was over two hours away uh, I had to scale and uh, for those of you curious I'll show you my scale tickets here's the first one um, you can see my steers fine uh, my drive axle was fine but my trailer was at 35,000 that's a thousand over so I had to slide the tandems and reway so what that means is I had to move the uh, trailer tandems back uh, so that would put more weight back onto the drives of the truck. You think of it like a seesaw is how it works, you know? When you slide uh, them back that way, then that throws more to the front. You slide them more towards the middle of the trailer, and it leaves more on the trailer. So that's what I had to do. I moved it four holes because, at least on this trailer, every trailer is a little different, but on this one, uh, each hole is roughly 320-ish pounds. So, three, six, nine, twelve hundred. Uh, is about what that should have been, right? Somewhere around there. So here's the reway. So as you can see here on the reway, um, steer stayed about the same. Uh, drives, now we're at 33,500. You can be at 34,000 on your tandems, either drives or trailer. And that put the trailer down to 33,960, 40 pounds under. Uh, and the gross weight stayed the same, 79,200. So uh, what that meant is then, okay, I can add 500 pounds worth of fuel to be at the 34 on the drives. I do have the APU exemption because I, can, I have an APU and that gives me another 450 pounds. But if you look at the overall gross, so that would be 450 plus three uh, plus 500, that'd be 950, right? But uh, my gross is 79,200, so I can only add on uh, 800 pounds of fuel. So uh, that's roughly seven pounds a gallon. So that means I could add on uh, 114 gallons right then. Now I didn't fuel up, but I reset my uh, second trip uh, odometer thing on my Garmin, my trip B, so then that way I know whenever I get to where I am going to fill up, I add in the 114 pounds I knew I could have put on and the amount of miles I drove off and roughly my miles per gallon to calculate then how much fuel to put on. Got to do the math, baby, got to do the math. So at least I was able to make this load legal. Um, they had to take one pallet off because we're brokers do this to you all the time. When I got there, I said, you know, they said, oh, you're going to be overweight on this one. I said, well, they told me it was 42,000, and I know I can take 42,500 with full tanks on this truck and trailer combination. And they said, well, yeah, but that doesn't include the pallets. Really? If the pallets are going to be part of the load, then count the pallets! Why, I ought to... So luckily they agreed at least to take one pallet off, which would have dropped about 3,000 pounds, because that would have put me over gross. And, uh, you know, sometimes the weigh stations, they, they'll let you slide a little bit on the tandems and stuff, or the axle weight, but, you know, you, no, not over gross, no. They slap you hard with that one, baby. All right, this was on my way in this morning. Look at all the Bambies running all around. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they constantly keep switching direction. Luckily, I was going slow enough, I didn't have to hit any of them. And then on my way down this morning, while still on I-25, 
See this four-wheeler up there in front of me? He's hugging the left lane or the center line. Finally decides to switch lanes, gets over there and starts going a little too far over onto the shoulder. Oh, manages to get it back and then goes back onto the shoulder and almost biffs it right there. Hello! All right, so I made it about as far as I uh, really felt like making it tonight and knew I could maybe find some place to park. I went ahead and came up to Dalhart, Texas is where I'm at. There's a brand new Loves here, and it's off of one of the other highways that uh, kind of dissects the city. Um, so a lot of people don't even know it's still here yet. I parked at it a few, oh, a couple of months ago or something like that, and I knew there was a good chance, because it was almost 1.30 in the morning when I got here, that I might find a spot, and I did. So did that, did my post trip, took Rusty out, Yada yada yada, bada boom, bada bing, bada boop. So here I am now doing my video. I'm gonna throw this together real quick. I gotta get to sleep so I can get up and get rolling again tomorrow. I'm gonna run close to 600 miles each day for the next two days to make it all the way up to Michigan. I can show you the route again. Okay, as I always do when I get parked, I uh, redo my uh, my route, and so I put in here at the top where I am now in Delhart, and then I put in my next uh, place for tomorrow. Jones Travel Mart, about 9 hours, 18 minutes of driving time. Of course, that doesn't include pre-trip, post-trip, fueling, brakes, yada yada. And then on Sunday, then I'll go to the 76th Street Auto Truck Plaza in Byron Center, Michigan. Uh, literally right across the street from where I'm delivering. Another 9 hours, 23 minutes of driving. And then you can see it's showing 150 feet to the delivery, zero minutes. So let's look at the map. Alright, so here it comes. So here I am, down here in Dalhart, Texas, in the Texas Panhandle. And we'll get going tomorrow, and uh, let's see. That's where the green thing is where I'm starting at. Yep, so that's where I am. We go across a little bit of Oklahoma, go into, uh, oh, and right there at Guyman, Oklahoma, I think that's where the cheapest fuel is. I'll probably be fueling there. And I'm gonna, I decided to go a different route. I was originally gonna go across 40, Oklahoma City, 44, up through Missouri, St. Louis, and up that way. I found this route, this is the way I came down to New Mexico is actually a little bit shorter by about 45 miles. So we'll go across. It wants me to go through Wichita. I'm actually gonna keep going up here and go across that way. Uh, and then I can avoid the turnpikes and so forth. That's where I'll make it tomorrow night to Cameron, Missouri. And then Sunday night, we'll try to make it all the way up there to Byron Center, Michigan, right there. And that's right where I deliver. I've been forgetting to put it in the last few videos when I was home again and reloading the truck with all the supplies and everything. I got to again thank uh, Junior. Oh, Junior sent more stuff. Thank you. He supports this channel unlike anybody else, I tell you. Connie had sent those begging strips. So we have those. Uh, I had complained about in one of my videos a week or two ago. Now <clears throat> I couldn't find the rectangular shaped Kleenex boxes. And Junior found, obviously, somewhere on like Amazon or something, this is the professional. This is like if you go to a hotel, it's a little shorter box, but it's still the square one that fits up on the dash just right. So he sent me a whole pack of these. So Junior, thanks for those. I've been, I'm already on my like third or fourth box. I've been using those like crazy. He sent me a whole bunch of cleaning wipes too. Uh, also sent me a screen cleaning wipes so I can clean my uh, GPS and my um, phone and stuff. And uh, what else? I think he sent something else. I'm blanking on it right now, but Junior again, thanks so much for supporting the channel the way you do. Yeah, I just had to show that road because it was just nuts. Right, Rusty? Yeah, I mean, uh, all of those curves, you couldn't do more than like five or ten miles an hour and up and down, all around. Uh, if it was like a roller coaster, it would have been fun, but you know, in a big truck, you know, so much, or what do you think? Yeah. Alrighty, thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe. Please like and comment. Get to, my com get to your comments as soon as I can. Sometimes it takes a few days because I'm a working truck driver. Uh, there's Clutch Truck on Instagram, Clutch Truck on Twitter. Don't forget to ring that bell for notifications so you know when the new videos come out. And as always, sniff that magic YouTube fairy dust. Clutch and Rusty, out. Our guidance counselor used to ask us if we had a million dollars, then what would we want to do with our life? And, the, you know, if you answered, like, I want to work on old cars, well, then, you know, you're supposed to be a mechanic. Well, what was your answer? I don't know. I, I never had an answer. Yeah, that's because that question is crap. If everyone listened to her, then no, there'd be no janitors, no one to clean up all the junk. You know, if I had a million dollars, I would do nothing. I would sit on my ass all day, do absolutely nothing. All right, he's poised and ready. No, come back down here. I stole my hand. See, come down here. Down here, Rusty. You know the rules. There it goes. All right, land it on your head. 
You a meatball dog? Oh, a lot of people do ask, uh, why is he called a meatball dog? I've addressed this many times. But it's because uh, when I was a kid and I was being silly, my parents always said I was acting like a meatball. And Rusty's always silly, so he's always acting like a meatball. So that's where the world famous meatball dog comes from. And of course, the world famous part is because when my uh, buddy John Branch did that article on me in the uh, New York Times during the pandemic, then I had a lot of people all over the world check out the Clutch Trucker channel. So that's why he's the world famous meatball dog. Oh yes. Who loves them bacon strips. Loves them baby. Oh yes, happy dog. You almost done there buddy?